trying to say. Before we get out of here, we do have some individual awards to shout out. I think we only finished with picking not, three. Not right? so much awards. <laughs> not to know, yeah. These mean nothing. They have no merit. We're uh, giving out plaques for this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once we can afford it. Uh, okay. First sacking. We've, there's a couple really, really good candidates. For for a second there, and this is the one that I, I needed to explain, I thought Potter was going to step down, Grant Potter, because I think Brighton will have such a howler of a season. And once the fans start acting up, once his name gets into a lot of the criticism talks, I think he will straight up up and walk. I think that'll happen relatively early. Uh, if not him, Scotty Parker. And that's only because it might take Bournemouth with two months to win a match. So uh, that would be my other pick. But those are my two. I'd say... Uh, I'd say Fulham, just because Fulham have been in this position. What, the manager? What? Fulham's going to get sacked. Fulham's manager? <laughs> Fulham you think Fulham will sack yeah. Sorry, Marco Silva. Oh, Marco Silva. Oh, I, I started off. I was going to get into that. But, Fulham uh, will get sacked. Marco Silva, I think, will get sacked. I mean, just because Fulham have been in this situation before where they come up, they don't win a game for a while, things go sour, they sack, they try to replace him. It's like a cycle. It's I think he's also unhappy with he's what's unhappy. Gone done. Yeah, he's unhappy. He, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. He's unhappy. And... When you're, I think if you're just if you just start off that way, like I think Bournemouth will be more loyal to Scotty Parker than Fulham will be to Marco Silva until it lasts a little bit longer. But like Scotty Parker will last longer. Marco Silva, I just don't think it, it will happen. I think Fulham are a club that when things get tough, they'll like to get the manager out and find someone that will, is willing to come in and deal with the shit show that that club's probably going to go through. Because I think Fulham will finish below Bournemouth the entire season. Oh, my sacking is. Brendan Rodgers. Mm. Yeah. Taking the word we all have them finishing mouth. in a spot on the table that would maybe deserve a sacking. It does depend on players, but like still. He, he, I don't know. Like the whole smugness, I just think he gets kind of like, not, I guess he gets kind of hostile sometimes when things don't go his way. And like, I don't know. I think the way the season ended last year, I I don't really – like when thing if things go bad right off the bat, like he's out. Like I don't really see a way to he, like, – He's given the he's he's been given the luxury of time. Yeah, that's what I said last season. I was like, this guy has got this guy's got to leave at this point. I thought he was leaving after the last season, but I guess not. Does seem ripe for a move. But I honestly. still think relegation sides they're going to deal with the most shit when it comes to managers. Yeah, I I think it's going to be Brendan Rodgers was my first choice, but my second is Ralph Hasenhutel. I think mm. really I I think they're going to have like, like you said that last year. I, <laughs> Well, I said they were going to get relegated. It's going to happen one of these year. years. Um, but <laughs> sometime. Yeah. I just think that they're going to have like a very glaring stretch and it like might finally be time. I think he is somewhat unsackable for Southampton, but I think it gets to a point where it's like we need to move on. It, but Brendan Rodgers comes first. I mean, I don't, I don't. He can't go up any higher. Like he can't do anything that he hasn't done with Leicester and them not doing any business and the injury prone side that they have like – could get ugly quick. I believe Harry Kane will win the golden boot. I also have Harry Kane. I think with this midfield I've spoken so highly of, now that he doesn't need to do so much dropping back, and I know from a creative standpoint he'll still be doing a lot of the legwork, but uh, with a lot more steadiness behind him, he'll have more chances to get free in front of goal. So I think he will he'll, – and he'll score a lot of pens too. Let me just say that right now. He'll probably take every pen that we get this season, so that always helps very much. But Mo could be right up there. I say Mo Salah, just considering the amount of goals that Liverpool create. Uh, yeah, he went on a dry stint last season, but he scored enough goals in the first half of the season to see him throughout the rest where he did tie with Son. Uh, I think Harry Kane's too injury prone. So I think it will be between Son and Salah throughout the entire season, but Salah will ultimately see it out. I have Harry Kane for reasons that Tristan said. Mm. Even though I do have him six, but I do so, th- I don't think the goals will I don't think the goals will be a problem. I think consistency will be a problem, but I do think Harry Kane's going to score a lot. Two for Kane, one for Mo. Connor, don't surprise us now. Sony. Oh, I think nice. Kane. I think Kane goes down for a month or two. This Jesus, season. guys, can we keep bringing this up? My God, <laughs> we're speaking into truth. I think Van Dyke is going to just quit. I think, I think he'll quit. I think he won't play anymore. I don't think his heart's in it. He's going to quit. Those wobbly ankles, man. You can count on. They're going to make him cut his hair. Tristan, he, he, Tristan, every night before bed, he has like those like dolls or whatever. That, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the voodoo dolls. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just by myself in my studio apartment at three. I'm just breaking a doll's ankles. <laughs> 
My neighbor's like, whoa, what the <laughs> shit? Looking through my window, people are like, that's the witch voodoo room. <laughs> There's some real stuff going on up here, guys. Don't leave me alone for too long. Um, so you think Sonny's going to... I I would love to see him put the ball in the net again, but it's like because so many of these other candidates also take pens, I'm like, I always have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, he's shown that's not a problem. True. Yeah. He buried a cup. He bagged one uh, against the Korean All-Stars when we won whatever cup that was. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think Sonny's going to be... I, Rate that guy. I think he's El got Pro something Blamo. to prove. His pops came out and <laughs> talking shit. I think Tottenham <laughs> now has something to prove. Yeah, his dad just like got behind a microphone for no reason. I was like, why are we doing this? It's classic. Can dad we stop move. interviewing dads, please? Thank you. Let's leave this to the players. Um, okay. Did you say Golden Boot yet? So. Oh, right. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Kind of late. This beer went right to my head. Breakout star. It's funny that you guys brought up Richarlison in the way that you did because he is my breakout star of the season. Like you said, he was someone Conte has wanted for a while. I've boasted about Spurs depth this season, but actually the front three is not as deep as I'd love, more as like a backup for Kulu, but then it's Kane and Son, you know, and then it does get sort of thin after that. So I think he will get a lot of appearances. Like you said, he'll get more chances. Um, And I criticized him when he first came to Spurs because the same as Basuma. It was a lot of, uh, as I was telling you, I'm excited for Champions League. I'm excited to play. I've always wanted to play Champions League. And I'm thinking, I, you know, I get that for sure. But you are playing for Spurs as well. That's the team that qualify for Champions League you're playing for. So, But then again, I, I say that and I watch him just bruise and punch people. The guy who knocked Sonny over, he got up and got in his face. So he seems to be already torpedoing for the badge, um, <coughs> which I love to see. So he's my breakout guy. I think he'll be a serious problem for teams. I wasn't going to say this before. We said it off the mic, but I'm taking it back. Sancho is going to be my breakout star. Um, I think this is where he has to make a, it's make or break for him this season. Uh, he's one of my players that needs to show up or he'll see himself out this season. He'll just find his way slowly being removed from the squad. So, uh, yeah, I think he, I mean, he showed glimpses of it last season towards the end or the second half. Productivity wasn't there, but I think, like Jalen mentioned in the, in the side that Ten Hag likes to set up, a lot of it creative attacking football with more structure going forward. I think this will be a thriving system for him. I mean, in Dortmund, you could see that too with Tuchel. Um, I mean, they, they were very structured and organized, but he was able to thrive in that as well. I know it's a German league, but no different in terms of when you have that system built into the squad. But yeah, make or break for Sancho, and I think this is where it has to happen. I think it will happen, so... I'm going to switch the breakout to resurgence, and I'm going to put my boy Rashford out there. Hey, I think, I think I, we'd all love to see I that. Think, I think he'll make a big comeback, and I think he's looked pretty good during preseason. I don't think he, I think he's definitely, I think he's been working hard, and I think he'll be more comfortable with Ten Hag. That, uh, that little promo video he made with him grinding, he, I yeah, love that thing. Just, with the, with the British just, tunes in the background. He's like 2% body fat. Yeah. His tattoos are everywhere, and he's just fucking. He's, I didn't realize he was so tatted. I didn't, has he always had those, or has he been slowly building? It I was, feel like he has a lot. It was more funny now. seeing him like break onto the scene as just like this like 17 year old kid, and then every season you just saw him get tatted up more and more. I'm like, this guy is sick. I cannot <laughs> wait for him. But then obviously. <laughs> but then last season, but, 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 but then last season, but every other season, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, I think that that's a good shout. I like that. Con man, I have a short list. I think which I'll pick one. This guy, I'll pick one. You're out here with five answers. He's got a short list, <laughs> guys. Was I not clear in the beginning? Fine, I'll say twelve. Ten, yeah. ten to fifteen <laughs> goals. <laughs> um, well, Tyreek Mitchell is one. Uh, if Crystal Palace have the season that or anticipating them having. I think he's a player that proved himself a bit, but could really make a name for himself this season. I would put him kind of third. Anthony Alanga, if mm. one. I think Anthony. Anthony Alanga? Um, no, I, 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 I think I'm just saying it that way. He's really, he's really a good player. He's more, more physically capable than I would say borderline Rashford but definitely Sancho I think he's more physically capable and I think he's just a grafter like he's doing he's willing to do things that those other attackers in the United line aren't so it might get him more minutes and I hope he continues to see regular time and then I think the true breakout star is going to be Harvey Elliott because Hendo's fading Um, he plays on the off the right side it's going to be tough to maybe cover for him defensively but Klopp favored him early last season prior to his injury and He's a, he's a fucking good player. So like, he, the kid can play. On the same side of the field as Trent, I have to maybe potentially bring up defending issues on that right side. That might be a gettable side of the field. Uh, I think 
our other midfielders, like I think Tiago is willing to relinquish some of his, like Tiago can play the balls from deep and still attack from like areas further back on the pitch. So I think he'd be willing to sit deeper to offer coverage where Fabinho can slide and favor the right side. Also, if there's one CDM that can compensate for a player's lack of defensive ability, it's going to be Fabinho. Like the guy gets stuck in on challenges. I mean, that he guy, win, he can win any ball. That guy is, and I say this every season, that guy is truly something else. I mean, put him literally anywhere and he will be the best at that position. I've, there's not a lot of other guys. I feel like you could say that about, but that's a team with a lot of big names on it, and he has to be near the top, literally up there with Mo. I'm not even like exaggerating in terms of importance. Like, I, he will be a player who's sorely missed, but yeah. top class.